Leo friends and welcome to your horoscope for January of 2021 and welcome to 2021 where you're starting off Leo this month with the sixth house really strong, really, really strong, which tells me things in health are going to be looking at your attention, making sure your energy, your vitality are up, making sure that you are resting enough and doing those kinds of things is going to be very important, as well as just keeping an eye on your daily routine. So you definitely have a big boost to this sixth house. I mean, you've got 40% of the planets are hanging out here at this particular time. So that's pretty important to take note of. As well, the seventh house of relationships is going to be the house of work for you this year. But it's also really, really nice here in January because it speaks a lot to in your relationships being social in order to help you move forward in areas of your love life, other relationships or places that you contract or agree to hang out, as well as in your career. So I really like this month for you, actually, Lee. I just want you to also pay attention to your energy, guard it, protect it, feed it, nourish yourself as much as you can this month, okay? All right, before we get in here and talk about what's going on, the eat and greets, the eat and greets. I'm so excited. They continue to roll on. People are asking at this point to come over and be a part of this and teach and give to our community. So this month is going to lack absolutely no delicious, beautiful astrologers coming to the table. And I'm very excited that we're starting off January of 2021 with Mark Jones coming over where we are not only going to do an eat and greet for you, but we're going to also do a meditation so that we can ground down into 2021 together. It's like really activating our best selves, whatever that looks like for each of us, but we're going to ground in together. So I hope you do not miss it. Make sure you check the description box down below for the eat and greet playlist. And remember, you can always watch the eat and greets completely ad free by joining me over on Patreon. So lots of eat and greets, lots of astrology available over here on Stormy Grace this year. And I hope that we'll be together for all of it. All right, let's jump in here, my fair Leos, and talk about what's going on in January of 2021. Right at the beginning of the month on the 2nd, we see Mars officially coming out of its full retrograde path. Now, yes, Mars has been out of retrograde, but he's had to do the post-retrograde time in order to get back to the degree he actually went retrograde in and get ready to move on. So as we get to the 2nd, Mars is free. He's freely, full, moving forward, flowing, giving us the blessings, and that is good news for us. So if you felt like Mars came out of retrograde and you got a little bit of relief, now as he really gets ready to move forward, plans, actions, all of this stuff moving forward will really be in your favor, okay? On the 4th, Mercury is going to come back in bounds. Now, if you remember, Mercury went out of bounds there in December, and when Mercury goes out of bounds, we have to go out of bounds. We have to look think, speak, communicate outside of our normal realm of being. For you, this has definitely been in the sixth house in that Capricorn energy. So in your daily routines, maybe they got a little out of bounds. But while you were out of bounds, what did you learn? What information did you gather? Did you have conversation with interesting people? Did you have different conversations about your health, your daily routine, and what that looks like? Now as Mercury comes back in bounds here on the 4th, what happens is we can take that information we saw out of bounds or take those out of bounds experiences and apply them back to our normal kind of routine and see if that gives it some life, some zhuzh, some thought, some new perspective, things like that, okay? And it'll also kind of calm you down. Mercury out of bounds can be like zzzz. It can be very sizzly energy. So we're back in bounds. A little bit of chill is good for all of us. Now on the 6th, we see Mars actually making his move forward into the energy of Taurus, lighting up your 10th house space, tip top of the chart. Now this gives me the indicator that in business, in what you're doing in the world, because if you're not working, you're retired, whatever it is, I would like you to think about this in the context of what are you doing in the world? What are you giving? What do we know you for? What's your title? Including, you know, what's your married title? What's your parenting title? If you've got a title and you do in some capacity, think about it in these terms. Mars and Taurus is saying here, we built something, we started something, we had a desire and we found out about it during that Mars retrograde of 2020. But then as Mars came out of retrograde, we had to realize we have to start being and moving and being in action as that person we really desire to be. So now as Mars is moving here into Taurus in this 10th house in your career, it's almost saying very assertively, maybe even for some of you aggressively, I am going to actively be 
who I said I wanted to be. I'm going to be active. I'm going to be a bit more assertive with my career. Now, how are you going to do that? You're going to do it like a Taurus. You're going to ground down. You're going to make dependable things. You're going to beautify the space. You're going to do it nice and slow so that you can carry out and build and establish what it is that you want here. But certainly, I wouldn't be surprised in the arena of business or what you do in the world if this isn't a little bit more heated and a little bit more active as Mars is here in Taurus. But remember, Mars also can act as the gardener not just the conflict person Taurus loves to garden so get down into the meat and potatoes and the gushy soil of what you're doing on this planet and make sure it's going to grow something really lush for you okay on the 8th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Aquarius as well. Venus will move into the energy of Capricorn. So this lights up Mercury in your 7th house, Venus in your 6th house. Mercury in the 7th house, we're social. So 7th house, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships, whether it be a business relationship, a marriage, or any other kind of partnership to include open enemies, which means you know this person doesn't necessarily care for you, right? So with Mercury here in Aquarius, we're thinking in air and Mercury likes it. And this is comfortable. There's lots of conversation. It's social. It's beautiful. It's a space of sharing ideas. Mercury was out of bounds. What did you learn in your daily routine that now you're bringing into your relationships here? So lots of conversation and communication and decisions available here in your seventh house. So if you've been waiting to make a decision to partner up, take that class, join the this, let go of the that, this is a good time for Mercury to be at full power to help you. Now, we also see Venus in the energy of Capricorn. So now Venus is going to come to bring some harmony to the daily routine, to your health. Venus is going to come to beautify and maybe look around your daily routine, your life, how you're dealing with yourself on a daily basis. Is it time to beautify? I mean, are you still just in your sweatpants and you forgot you're kind of cute? Here in the energy of Capricorn, Venus will show up and say, what are we achieving? Does this achieve, achieve the level of beauty, of harmony, of resonance with the gorgeous around you that you'd like to be achieving. This can also be really, really helpful if you've been having a challenge with someone in your daily routine, like a co-worker, um, maybe even a project you've been working with. If you felt stalled or you want to put the finishing touches on it, Venus is going to be your helper to help you do that right here. Now, on the, on the 13th, excuse me, we see a new moon happening in the energy of Capricorn at 23 degrees. So again, more light, more heat, more oomph into this sixth house area for you. The new moon says we're going to plant our seeds of intention. We're going to begin something new or put a fresh perspective on something that's already been there. Again, in the energy of Capricorn, it's am I achieving in this area? Am I having the maturity, the success, the stability, the growth that I would like in this area? Now, remember, Capricorn is an earth energy. So this can very much so be a question of in your physical right here, material reality. Are you achieving the way you'd like to be? And if not, or if you are, but you're ready to see this area grow, plant your seeds of intention around this Capricorn energy. You have had a loaded sixth house energy. So let this moon guide you, plant and manifest here. But remember, at a new moon, we're planting and manifesting in the dark. So use all the intuition, use all of the creativity and all of that magic that's available to sense where you'd like this to go. And then you can craft and create that, okay? On the 14th, Uranus is coming out of retrograde in your 10th house. Now, Uranus has been retrograde since August, and now he's out of retrograde at seven degrees of Taurus, the 10th house. Uranus has given you a shake up here in the career. And also for many of you Leos, I promise that I just have this sense it has changed your identity and your title as well. Were you extra single in 2019, like so single it hurt, and now you're not. You know, it would have changed your title in that way. But Uranus here as well speaks to a very social um, business career title area of your life. So I think you can find new people, shocking people, interesting people that you didn't interact with or ideas or maybe even just heavy technology being available in this area of your life. And Uranus moving forward now. He's not fast moving like Mars or Mercury, right? He's slower moving, but he will have given you a chance to reevaluate the rut you were in and how he's pulling you out of it and changing your course forward. So it's a beautiful energy. 
On the 15th, Mercury hits its shadow time now, okay? So Mercury is going to hit a retrograde at the end of the month, but we've got to begin the shadow time. So here, in the energy of Aquarius, watch in your relationships. As of the 15th, Mercury is slowing down. He's going to bring your attention to some things that he's going to give his full attention to as you're in the retrograde. So as of the 15th, start watching what's happening in your relationships. Conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships, especially you're thinking about them. Maybe relationships that are coming up from the past and you're needing to relook at them contracts negotiations issues you've had with other people including legal things keep your eyes on that because you can start to spot it a bit as mercury slows down here on the 15th on the 17th we're going to have jupiter who's over in the energy of aquarius so your seventh house here come into a square with uranus who's in taurus over here in your 10th house now this particular square i actually think is really really useful these are two outer planets right so we're going to see things maybe even happening in our outer worlds relationships in the outer worlds relationships in work or at work or with extra people you know if you got married or something you're joining a family if you got divorced you're getting away from a family relationships around your title or what you do seem to be changing now i will tell you why i while i think that this is a great energy because a square will make you take action right while i think that this is a great energy for taking something forward and yes you've got the idea yes you've got the new connections what i'll tell you is in whatever you're doing under this square please just make sure all your pieces of what you are already doing are in place look over them it's almost like i feel like i want to tell you to just confirm that the ground you're standing on with whatever project with whatever relationship is really really solid before you like leap to take it to this next level uranus has only just come out of retrograde and sometimes that can be like whew relief let me do the thing and i'm more like relief pause look around make sure you've got all your puzzle pieces on the table and then let's put that thing together in just a couple days okay on the 19th, we see the sun coming into the energy of Aquarius. Now the seventh house is getting busy. We've got the bigger planets. We've got Saturn. We've got Jupiter up here. We've got Mercury, even though he's heading towards retrograde up here. Now we've got the sun bringing light, heat, life, and vitality to this Aquarian area of your life. So new life, new energy, new vitality, new social to your seventh house of relationships. So participate let it be a busy social month for you talk connect share share ideas relationship contract with new people and things like that okay on the 28th we've got a full moon happening in your sign how beautiful let's start off the year with a full moon in your sign the full moon says we're going to end something acknowledge something or make an adjustment so right here at the beginning of the year leo what are you ready to put down as you've come into 2021 what are you ready to end acknowledge or adjust about Leo, about you, about your body, about your mind, about your identity. Where are you willing to surrender to win just a little bit? And where has everything you've been doing got so much light shine shown on it that you can see the purpose of it? You have an understanding of it. You're like, this is what I'm about. This is what I'm doing. Even if it's only a small little bit, this amount of light will show you the purpose of what you've been working on, what you've been growing, what you've been doing, and what can't come forward will fall off. What's ready to come to culmination and be its next thing and get ready for you to share will also be shown to you under this energy. I love it. And let's not forget the relationships that can't come forward and the ones that you no longer fit in, they'll be out the door here pretty quickly as well. On the 30th, as we close this month, we're going to see Mercury heading into retrograde at 26 degrees of Aquarius. Now it's going to be in retrograde until February 20th, where it will come out of retrograde at 11 degrees of Aquarius. So you can just kind of watch this in your chart to see what that's going to look like in that area of the chart for you. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is during the Mercury retrograde, we already started to see it on the 15th and now we'll go back and retro review re-edit reunite people can come back it's the seventh house even ideas of people or relationships or contracts or ideas or the way you even think about relationships can be coming back to your table at this time and you're going to go back over these things so take the retrograde time don't get weird during a retrograde get wise what do you need to see what do you need to correct what is your attention being called to at this particular time and remember Every retrograde is not as intense for every sign. It will depend on the other makeups in your chart, the intensity of this retrograde. But here's roundabout 
where these areas are happening for you, okay? All right, my beautiful Leo friends, I hope you have a beautiful January. I look forward to sharing space and time and energy with you here. So please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Come with me on Patreon where extra content will be available there as well. All right, my loves, I will see you next month. Bye, Leo.